Hey, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and in today's video, I'm super excited to show you what's new in Oxygen 4.0. Oxygen 4.0 has been a long time coming, but that's because it includes some fundamental changes to Oxygen that demanded a really slow and steady approach to the release. We did multiple alphas, betas, and an RC to make sure this thing is rock solid before putting it out to you. This release includes so many quality of life and workflow improvements, as well as some cosmetic upgrades. But let's jump into kind of the nuts and bolts real quick and look at something we've done on the back end. Let's go to the product tour page here on my example site, and you're gonna notice a new item here in the meta box. We have short codes, which most of you are familiar with if you use oxygen but now you'll see JSON. We've converted oxygen storage method from short codes to JSON. JSON is much easier to work with and in fact is what we converted the short codes to in the builder anyways. So we've cut out the middleman, which should speed up the builder environment considerably. Note that JSON and short codes will kind of run side by side so that we have a fallback, but eventually short codes will be phased out completely. Because of this change, it is important to test 4.0 on a dev or staging environment not because of issues with Oxygen, but rather with other plugins that integrate with Oxygen. Many of the developers for plugins that integrate with Oxygen have already made the necessary updates, but it's always good to test before throwing a major release up on your live site. In addition to this, Oxygen 4.0 is PHP 8.x compatible. So if you're on a host where they're forcing an upgrade to a PHP 8.x version, you can now use Oxygen there safely. Another change we've made that some users will be very excited about is that the repeater element no longer outputs duplicate IDs. It's been super annoying since the repeater came out and we weren't sure it was possible to fix, but we put our heads down and we put our dev team to the task and they came up with a really smart solution to give unique IDs to all the repeater elements while still allowing you to style them as you did before. Let's jump into the builder and see some of the more interesting changes to our UI and workflow. And the first thing we're going to see is a new loading animation. Not only does oxygen load faster, but now we have something a little bit more interesting to look at while it does it. So here we are in the builder. And if you're an oxygen user, you're going to quickly notice that things look a little different. We've overhauled the builder UI to try to streamline things a little bit and make it look more modern. So you'll notice that our breakpoints are all up here at the top, whether you have an element selected or not, which makes it super easy to work on your responsive design. And if you click an element with some responsive settings, let's find one here. This little div has some responsive settings. You'll see the little purple border on the bottom that indicates some settings are on this breakpoint. And if you hover over it, you can clear them using the red X in the tooltip. Now, while we're over in the properties pane, you probably noticed some of these indicators, these little green and blue indicators. These let you know where the styles for a property are coming from. For example, here on this timeline text, we have the ID selected, but we can see that there are styles for text color, font size, and font weight coming from the class. So if we wanted to override them, we could using the ID, or we could just go over to the class that we know is styling these properties and make changes there. Similarly, if we go to the ID and make a change on one of these, like font size, you'll see the indicator changes to tell us that it's styled via the ID. This is super helpful because you cannot override ID styles with class styles. So over here, we see even though our font size is set to 65, it still has the blue indicator, letting us know that the ID is overriding this. So this is a workflow enhancement that will make your life so much easier when working with classes and IDs. Another little enhancement related to this is that the values from larger breakpoints are now shown as inherited values when you choose a smaller breakpoint. So we have 32 pixels for the font size here. Let's step down to less than 992 and you'll see that we can still see the value that's being inherited. Before you had to kind of juggle back and forth and be like, oh, it's 32, now I need to set it to 28 or whatever you wanted to change it to in relation to the larger breakpoint. Now it's much easier to see at a glance what you're working with. Additionally, over here in the properties pane area, you can also double click an element and rename it easily. This saves you a lot of time going into the structure pane, clicking a little pencil, clicking rename. So we've removed several clicks required to rename elements. 
We've also redesigned our ad pane. So if we click here, we can see our elements are laid out a little bit differently. This actually allows us to see all the elements, for instance, in the basics category in one view without having to scroll. And helpers, there's a little bit of scrolling, but you still can see pretty much everything at a glance. So this is a much more efficient layout that allows you to see everything quickly and choose the element you need. Now moving over to the builder preview, let's talk about keyboard shortcuts. So Oxygen hasn't had much in the way of keyboard shortcuts traditionally, except for undo and redo. And they didn't really work perfectly all the time. So we revisited those and we added a few new ones. Let's go ahead and change a color here and we'll hit Command or Control Z, and that steps the color change back. Command or Control Y brings us back up to current. We can also hit Command or Control Delete to remove an element, or we can hit Command or Control D to duplicate it. Those are all good and well, but the coolest ones are the copy and paste. So for instance, let's choose this element. Previously, the workflow would be to click the Duplicate button and then drag it over where we want it. Well, now we can just hit Command or Control C and then go where we want it and hit Command or Control V and it's pasted right in. Note that this works across page designs on the same site. So if we wanted this exact div with its contents and styling on a different page, we just copy it, go over to that page and paste it in. This is gonna save tons of time. We also made some tweaks to the margin and padding controls for elements with those controls. So we go to advanced size and spacing. And if you're somebody that likes to use CSS functions in Oxygen using the none unit, it has always been frustrating to not be able to see the values you're typing in. So now when you click into fields with the none unit, they're gonna expand to the full width that they can and show you what you're typing. And it works on all of these fields here. So we click there and it expands out. Eventually we'll likely have that feature for all fields that can be switched to the none unit. But for right now, it's limited to just a few fields such as padding and margin. Now stepping over in the UI to the right hand side, we have more controls exposed on the top level here. So instead of having to drill down to get our style sheets and selectors, they're right here on the top bar and we can pull them up quickly. And speaking of selectors, they're also searchable now. So if we wanna find a selector with button, we just type in button and those will show up. This again will save tons of time when searching for a specific selector that you need to edit or delete. Now let's open up the structure pane and take a look here. This is pretty much the same. There are some styling changes here, but one of the big things is you can now double click to rename items here as well. So again, we're removing clicks from the workflow where we can to make things more efficient for you. Now, one of the changes to one of our elements that I wanna talk about is the image element. So let's drop in an image and you'll notice the image is now default to the media library option. This is because the media library option is the more performant option. It does two things which are really good for your site. It pulls its alt text from the media library, which is super helpful if you put in a bunch of images and forgot to put alt text in. Previously, it was kind of a challenge to go through and edit the oxygen designs where those images lived and add the alt text in oxygen. Now, using the media library, it's always gonna pull the alt from the media library unless you don't want it to, and then it's possible to override that using a custom attribute called alt. And if you put something in here, it'll use that instead. But generally, you're gonna wanna use the alt from the media library. We also added the ability to use dynamic data to pull the ID of the image. So you can grab featured images this way. And the best part is these images, when you use the media library option, use source set and allow you to choose an image size. So let's browse and grab one so that I can show you that. And instead of just always putting the full size image, which it does default to, so this image is pretty big, say it's a couple thousand pixels wide, but we're displaying it at a couple hundred pixels wide. It's a huge waste to pull the entire image and it's a performance problem. So instead we can choose the appropriate size from the size dropdown. In addition to that, media library images are gonna use source set, which they always have, but now, since we're defaulting to the media library when you insert images, you're gonna be able to more easily take advantage of that for the performance gains it will offer. We also added some new controls here like object fit, object position, and aspect ratio. We also added a lazy load checkbox, which is another performance focused feature. If you tick this box, this image will not be loaded until it's scrolled into the viewport. 
This is useful for images, especially large images that might be below the fold, meaning they're not visible when your site first loads. You can set them to lazy load to save time on that initial load. So there are over 120 bug fixes, tweaks, enhancements, and new additions in Oxygen 4.0, and I can't cover all of them in this video, but I wanted to show you a few highlights about what we're bringing to the table with this version of Oxygen. And in addition to the changes in core, we also are releasing Oxygen WooCommerce 2.0, which includes several bug fixes, tweaks, and even a new element, which is an Ajax mini cart. We're also releasing Oxygen Gutenberg 1.4.1, which is just a small utility release with a security fix and some compatibility changes to make sure it all works smoothly with Oxygen 4.0. For a full list of all the changes coming in this version of Oxygen, please check out the full release blog post on our website, oxygenbuilder.com. And if you're not already a member, I'd encourage you to check out our Facebook group. We're now 32,000 members strong and there's always a good conversation going on there about oxygen, web design, web development, and that's where we announce pre-release versions of oxygen as well. And you can find the oxygen Facebook group at oxygenbuilder.com slash Facebook. And finally, thank you to all the users that helped us test oxygen 4.0 during the alpha, beta, and RC release phases. So again, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and that's what's new in Oxygen 4.0. Thank you very much for watching.